Perfect. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Las Vegas. This is Dave Vellante with John Furrier. This is day four of our wall-to-wall coverage at AWS reInvent 2024 from Las Vegas. Chris Gruz is here, Managing Director of Technology Partnerships at AWS. Chris, welcome back to theCUBE. Good to see you. Thanks for having me back. It's, uh, it's always fun to be here with you too. So we were just talking to, to, to Andy Jassy and he was saying, you know, people kind of misunderstand. They think when we announce something, oh, it's going to be competitive, it's going to kill the competition. He goes, these markets are so big, there's so much action. Yeah. It's not a zero sum game, my words, not his, but it's so true. I mean, the partner ecosystem has just exploded and it continues to grow. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, AWS doesn't look at these as winner take all markets by any means. And we've got a lot of examples. I've been with AWS for 10 years where we launch a service, and a lot of times it's actually the opposite. It's kind of like a rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah. You know, like when we launched QuickSight when I first joined 10 years ago, you know, we still have a very, very, you know, vibrant community around business intelligence tools, right? And there's a, there's a long history of other services like that. So, yeah. and I think a lot of our, our partners that have worked with us for a long time, sometimes with overlapping services, they recognize that, yeah. you know, if anything, it helps validate that space and actually provides kind of momentum for everybody in that particular technology category. Chris, in your role, talk about your role now, because you've done a lot of different things in the marketplace, technology yeah. partners, specifically yeah. what's your focus? Yeah, so my remit now is I manage uh, all the technology partners that are in Amazon Partner Network. Now, Marketplace is still a big charter for that because yeah. the tech partners obviously leverage Marketplace and it's our primary route to market. But my charters really work across all of our technology partner categories. And my team is really structured around three primary pillars. There's the infrastructure partners. So think about those are all the security and storage and networking partners that we've worked with for years. Um, I have a second team that focuses on the horizontal business applications. Right? This has really been the rocket ship part of my business where you think about the relationship that we've had that have really taken off with Salesforce. Uh, with ServiceNow, you know, you heard this week SAP Grow now being in the AWS marketplace. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've got a team that focuses on those CRM, ERP, you know, the you know the productivity apps and so on. And then I got a third team that's really focused on these vertical industry specific ISVs. So if you think about Epic and healthcare as an mm -hmm. example, right? You know, as a really good example, or Guidewire financial services. You know, that is yet another uh, team that we focus on. And then I've got a, a kind of a fourth team that focuses uh, specifically on startups. And we want to cultivate those startups and, and win those ISVs. And then those obviously feed into all three of those macro categories. And then, of course, the last team I have is still that marketplace business development layer because, you know, marketplace and ISV, our tech partners, it just becomes, you know, they're synonymous, right? You don't have the, you know, the conversation with one without the other. And so it's super exciting. I get to work with some of the coolest technology in the world, the biggest companies, the coolest startups. And, and so uh, I get energized every day. Coming to work. <laughs> Cloud ERP is interesting. You mentioned the SAP yeah. Grow. Um, that that's you know this is one of the harder applications to actually move to the cloud yeah. right? because there's so many processes involved. Yeah. So so that's kind of interesting and yeah. exciting. We're actually at that point now where customers are starting to 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 move those applications. What's what's their motivation? What are they telling yeah. you? What are they getting out? Of well, either I think there's a couple reasons why a lot of them, you know, SAP included, are, are really moving to the cloud. So one, it makes it a lot easier for the customers, right? When you're running on the cloud platform, you know, then they can really focus on the the ERP technology versus like, okay, I've got to have a steady state of servers coming in, and I've got an SI to support these. It really just makes it a lot easier for our customers to adopt those technologies, right? So that's the first piece. The second piece is Marketplace has just become a great way to transact, and we've been buying all of our infrastructure products, they don't want to buy those applications. And so it's, a, it's another big value add. And then you know the third piece that gets really exciting is when they're now on the cloud, now they can start to do generative AI applications, combining data in SAP and then using that with data in AWS in kind of a zero ETL format. And so this is just awesome for our joint customers because now they can pull that data together, right? It's no longer siloed in very disparate, separate organizations. Instead, it's much easier to stitch that together. And, and so I think SAP, if you talk to them, they'll say that's the big benefit, right? It really helps our joint customers. Uh, it really brings you know SAP and AWS closer together. And it's really exciting. Like we've been working with them uh, over the last year, really, uh, uh, that's kind of moved to Rise, and so now getting Grow, which is you know very complementary to their Rise product, uh, in the portfolio is great. And we've obviously also been working with them with Signavio. That was the first product they actually launched in Marketplace, which is their BPM platform, and then they have their business technology platform, which is everything else, right? That's their app server and all the other things that really support rise and grow from an innovation perspective. So yeah. the relationship's really taken off. Yeah, Chris, we had Baskar on, who's the VP of ML services for yeah. SageMaker, mainly infrastructure. Uh, he brought up the horizontal play. You mentioned it was one of your rocket ship areas. Yeah. And he was pointing out that the horizontal is really where the action is because mm -hmm. that's where the silos are getting busted down. Yep. So you're seeing a slew of new categorical application yeah. players. Yeah. 
really nailing the horizontal yep. layer. Yep. Explain that piece of the business. I think this is the fascinating yeah. part where Gen AI and say Bedrock and SageMaker is really going to shine. No, absolutely. Like one of the things that we announced this week was uh, is basically Q for ISVs, right? It's an extension of Q for business. And, and what this effectively does is it provides an index that now uh, all these kind of horizontal technologies, think about uh, Zoom as an example, it was one of our launch partners, right? They can actually index that data and have that available alongside Smartsheet, right? And then they can have that alongside AWS data. And so, you know, that's the really cool thing that now we can start to do is stitch this together and make it really easy for customers to, you know, combine data across the organization to create these generative AI applications. And so we had a, a great launch uh, list of partners, Asana was in there, and, yep. And, uh, and we're really excited about that as well. That went live this week, and, yeah. and uh, we think that's going to be really cool. But that's another big driver for these horizontal technologies to come in is, it, you know, and it works for them as well. Yeah. Now a Zoom user can actually start to pull in stuff to their environment as well. So it's yeah, a bilateral. I mean, it was of once silos, the analytics or this were separate things. Now they're kind of side by side and integrated tightly on a user experience. Exactly. Well, it just makes it easier for the yeah. customer. Now we're kind of providing some standardization, yeah. right, which is the key thing. So once you standardize, it just makes it a lot easier now build these applications, share that data across without actually having to remove it from those applications, and, right? And context switching and all that other sort of... Exactly. Thing. Like you think about in, in the old world, like they would have to ETL all that stuff out. They'd have to, you know, kind of go through a data cleansing process, put it in a data warehouse. And, you know, that's, that's not very efficient. And so instead, now having this index capability to use that across all those applications to now make generative AI applications, that's really cool. What else is going on? What, yeah. you, what, what, uh, what, what haven't we talked about? So, yeah. you, you know, Ruba has had a huge oh, yeah. presence at the show yeah. this year. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, she's bringing a new energy to the to the ecosystem. Oh, yeah. She's a hard charger. She's been really, you know, really kind of pushing the needle on what we're doing. And so the other thing that's really cool, and it's an extension of what I think we talked about last year, but uh, last year this time we launched a product called uh, Marketplace Quick Launch, which really was our first step to making our third-party SaaS ISVs look more and more like a first-party service, right? It really simplified the subscription experience, and it also provided the ISVs with the opportunity to put automation templates into their marketplace listings. So now someone could buy a product and quickly deploy it, because what we found was that there was this big disconnect. Once you subscribe to actually deploying, it could take 40, 50, sometimes over 100 clicks. And, and Quick Launch was the first launch to actually streamline that. And so, you know, that launched last year. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, what you saw was the announcement of Marketplace Everywhere, where we start to extend those APIs so people can do even more of that. And the, the one that's really cool is what we did with Databricks. So now Databricks has a very integrated solution with AWS. And when, with, when you're actually within the Databricks workspace, you can actually say, hey, I just want to subscribe to this through AWS Marketplace. Yeah. And that API has been extended all the way into Databricks. And so it just makes Databricks now look mm -hmm. more and more like a first-party service. How has the technology partnerships changed with, with the uh, ease of use to integrating in some of the beta, better data integrations? We heard from Swami's keynote. You see agents right around the corner. Obviously, yeah. with my land was on here talking about what's going on with her side mm -hmm. in terms of that that value is being created at S3. I mean, there's so much going on. Yeah. And we see things, the Anthropic getting close to Tranium too. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing a lot more um, connected ecosystem yeah. partners. Oh yeah, absolutely. In the technology. How has that changed, yeah. one, your relationship yeah. with the partners, and two, how has it changed the partner network's uh, value proposition? It just makes it a lot easier for us to work with, like uh, work together. So if you look, if you rewind back when we launched Security Lake, is another good example, right? The big thing about Security Lake is it actually standardized for our, all of our security partners, the signals that they were sending out, right? And so we actually came up with a standardized format so that whether it was coming from a CrowdStrike or Palo Alto or Splunk, you know, it could actually be put into a data lake and then our customers could actually now start to build, you know, much more of a comprehensive security story. And it was great for these ISVs individually because they could actually reach into the security lake and pull data out as well. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, providing that commonality across our partner ecosystem is, is so key because, it also leads to a better customer experience. Now our customers have an easier way to fit into our shared responsibility model. And the stuff that you heard this week around the data layer, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a lot of the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the relationship with Oracle, which is, you know, you know very surprising, right? In mm -hmm. that we're now, you know, actually working together as partners. A big part of that relationship is the zero ETL capability between AWS and Oracle. 
And so again, it's just making that very easy to actually pull data out of an Oracle environment, use it with AWS data, but actually not actually move it. You're actually leaving it in those environments, but you have a much easier way to stitch those two, two, those two environments together. What have been some of the things on the partner side as you guys grow? I mean, it's continuing to watch the growth. Yeah. It's like we're documenting our 12th year to reinvent. like we're documenting it, the history and it keeps getting better. Yeah. Um, you guys are always innovating on behalf of the customers, but partners, they have needs. What are some of the things you're doing now yeah. that's addressing some of the challenges like go to market? Yeah. Uh, Ruben and I talked uh, when she was in San Francisco for the mm -hmm. Global Startups launch. Yeah. Um, that's that program is now organized and coherent and yeah. very much tight. Yeah. Partners growing. What what are the, what are you hearing for? I need more of this. Can you yeah. do more of that? What are some of the top needs that you're addressing to keep innovating on the program side? Yeah, and no, so you should, you heard some of the changes yeah. that we made to the the global startup program when you went yeah. with Reba. But uh, you know, if you take an extension of that, one of the things yeah. that she announced yesterday was that we're now extending a lot of our co sell benefits down to our entire ISVA. Uh, list and so startups oftentimes. What does that mean? You know, so might not know. Yeah, so uh, ISV like the... Accelerate is our premier co-sell program. Okay, and and oftentimes it was hard for those startups to get in. They had to have a certain number of references and so on. And and we've actually started to remove those bars and focus more on do they have the technical aptitude. And if they did, then we can actually put that in the program. And so now things like our SaaS revenue recognition program is now available to everybody within that program instead yeah. of a very small subset. And so, you know, that's been a resounding, you know, success, you know, that we've heard this week is that it really helps, you know, provide a level playing field. Because yeah, you never know where the next rocket ship's going to come from. And, and, right. You exactly. get a chicken and egg. Well, you got to pass this hurdle, but they can't pass the hurdle because they can't. Right. And now yeah. you've removed that barrier. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, you look at this week and, you know, you see, you know, there's ISVs that you're here, you know, in the hallways today that weren't even really around a year ago. You know, you see the explosive growth of like, you look around Generative AI with someone like a, like a pine cone as an example or a poolside. You know, they're, they're just exploding and, you know, having a, a common framework, which is our marketplace, yeah. that they can snap into. And, and now suddenly they're at the game and they're able to go and do the co-sell. Our field is automatically compensated for them. Our customers automatically retire their commitments uh, using those technologies. Yeah. We can then start to integrate them deeper in AWS. It just allows us to really accelerate those hot yeah. new technologies up to the forefront. So now our customers get a better solution. So this is obviously a huge event for getting all the partners together and, 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 you know, getting on the same page. What's, what's the sequence over the next year? What, yeah. Is, we, we don't want to wait till the next reunion. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to continue to innovate. You know, we've, you heard about some of the bigger ones today, like in the last year, just on the marketplace side alone, we had 45 marquee launches and you hear a handful of them to, you know, you know, this week with marketplace everywhere and so on, but we're going to continue to innovate. Like internationalization is a big yeah. focus. So you're going to see more and more international capability. Uh, uh, from marketplace, yeah. you're going to see more regions and so on. And so that's going to be a big focus area. Channel mm -hmm. continues to be a big focus area. That's one of the things that we're really excited about with the Marketplace Everywhere feature. One of the key use cases there is actually to support our distributors. And so one of our launch partners for that feature was Ingram Micro. And what Ingram Micro has done is they're effectively leveraging this API to create their own storefront. And so these are third-party ISVs like a Palo Alto Networks, yeah, but they're now being fed from our AWS marketplace into their own environment. And these APIs now enable that. And so that's just unlocking this whole new layer of channel that we can go work with. Oh, okay. And that's really exciting. So they can curate their you know, opinionated stack, if you will, and offer it for their specific customers and pick and choose. And Exactly. Yeah. And you think about like, you know, again, those international markets where distributors are, are so key. Yeah. This just starts to unlock all kinds of cool business opportunities. And then the third use case that we saw around that is we see ISVs now looking at this saying, hey, I want to I want to actually build my own marketplace within my application. You know, so Workday was announced uh, as well. And, and they're actually looking at our APIs to actually integrate from marketplace into their own storefront capabilities. Mm -hmm. You know, because oftentimes, and to your earlier point, you know, you know, we're working with these partners, we're all working together. Yeah. And so they have their own partner, you know, kind of ecosystem that they want to work with us on. And so the, this yeah. marketplace everywhere uh, API, it just opens up so many cool possibilities. I, it's really exciting. You guys do such a good job. It's always always the goal to reduce the friction yes. in the motions and keeping the tools that need to be successful yeah. Yeah. and keep it up with the pace. What's the biggest surprise, Chris, this year? I mean, obviously, yeah. uh, the Gen AI wave is hit. Everyone's excited. Yeah. You're seeing poolside pop out, grow like yeah. a weed. you got people hitting escape velocity, new yeah. companies emerging. Yeah. What's been the biggest yeah. surprise for you this year? Yeah, I, you know, I, w I would say it's probably been just the the, the growth on the horizontal business applications. Yeah. You know, if we take a look at, like, we, it took us, you know, effectively eight years to get to a certain point with our infrastructure partners. So, like, and there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get to that point. The, the horizontal applications just came in and they shot up like a rocket. 
like way faster. So the numbers that we saw from you know the entry of a someone like a Salesforce or a ServiceNow, like it was just exponentially faster growth that we saw, you know, than the, the those traditional infrastructure partners that we first started with. And and that's been really cool. They're coming in in a very very big way. Yeah. They're not kind of limping in and saying, hey, we're going to try it over here. They're making full sale commitments. So when you see you know Mark Benioff at Salesforce talking about marketplace on his earnings call. Like that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, you see Carl Eichenbach at Workday talking about marketplace. You know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. interesting. So that's a that's a supplier leaning in. Oh yeah. Dynamic. I mean, the demand is there. We know that. Yeah. Well, they they just look at it as just a, it's such an easy way to quickly get that sales alignment, mm-hmm. right? Because marketplace is you know it helps with you know getting new customers, but it also really helps accelerate deals, right? You know, we've worked with a, a couple of analyst firms, and what they found is that. When you sell through marketplace, your your close rate is going to go up by twenty seven percent. Your deal size is going to grow by eighty percent, and you're going to get that deal done forty percent faster. So, your so cost of sales goes out. You're way more efficient. Right? Yeah, and you yeah. think about like let's say your average sales cycle is ten months. Mm-hmm. You're shaving four months off that sales What's cycle. That worth right? Right. That's yeah. bringing not one quarter but two quarters. Yeah. Right. You know, or if your ASP is a hundred k. Who doesn't want to have an ASP of 180K? That's easy math. Yeah. And so those types of things start to like really resonate. When I sit down with the CRO, they go, this is very interesting. I want to go do this. Mm. Chris, thank you so much yeah. for coming back to the Cube. It was great to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, it's been really exciting. You bet. Okay, keep it right there, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with John Furry. We're here live. Uh, actually, not live. <laughs> <laughs> we say that because we're so used to being live at AWS reInvent 2024. We'll be right back right after this short break. You're watching the Cube. Hello.